Welcome back to another episode of Accelerate the Great. I'm your host, Nehemiah Davis. And I told y'all, yeah, I told y'all, 2021, I'm not playing with y'all. Season two, I'm bringing some of the heavy hitters. I'm bringing people in here who can help you increase your income. We're all about growing our income 2021. This year is the year of assets for me. Every dollar that I make online and in my various businesses, I am putting them into more assets that will generate me wealth for years to come, as well as once I'm gone, my family will still be able to eat. So today's episode is going to be pretty dope. I'm bringing my bro uh, Byron on from Mobile Home Elite Investors One Half, right? And, and the reason why this episode dope, just yesterday, um, him and I and this lady, we drove about three hours from Atlanta to look at acquiring three different mobile home parks. I realized that this is what he does. So I'm like, bro, I need in. So he flew down to Atlanta and and, and we took that drive. And now we're looking at acquiring uh, several mobile home. And I said, look, bro, I need you to come do an episode. I need you to break down the game. I, I need that. I need I need these keys. So without further ado, y'all, I want to uh, invite my brother on Accelerate the Great, Byron Sellers. What up, my guy? What's good, my guy? Oh, everything's good, man. Thank you for taking time to get on the episode, man. How, how's everything? How's Atlanta treating you for the, for the little bit of time you've been here? Man, listen, life is good. I love the A. The A is like a second home. I'm surprised by y'all weather out here, man. I'm bruh, <laughs> in the 30s, bro. Man, this weather is crazy, bro. Like, I can't even. Th- this ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so tell us a little bit, bro. How did you get into mobile home investing? Like, it's unique. So, for me, I was telling. I was telling one of my friends, I'm like, hey, man, I'm interested in mobile home investing. His first thing he said was cash cow. I'm like, oh, okay." I said, it's so funny because me and my man about to go look at a few mobile homes. So I want you to kind of break down. I know you had a story of how you got into it so people can hear it. Facts. So, man, listen, my mobile home investing, that was something I I joke around. I tell people, I said, listen, if God would have showed me. Mobile home investing, I'd be like, come on, God, no, I'm, I'm doing these multifamilies. Don't put me in this sector. But, you know, to fast forward, I mean, to rewind, um, I, you know, I was, working, I was working in the transportation industry for 10 years and uh, various jobs. I tell people this, I was fired from over four different companies mm. because I always had that boss mindset. Like, yep. you can't tell me what to do. You don't pay me. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and so I remember in 2016, I saw a mobile home because my coworker told me he flipped a townhouse. He bought it for 7000 He turned around and flipped it for right at 15 i'm like what like how you getting stuff that cheap so i remember looking like on redfin and i found a mobile home that was on sale for seven thousand. Mm. i'm like bro i gotta get this so i go the first person i go to is my uncle who does some you know does some real estate he like that's horrible do not get a mobile home buyer and that's horrible i'm like okay so i, I walked away from it march 3rd fast forward march 3rd 2017 i was fired from my job and uh you know now i'm like yo i want to get into real estate you know i want to go get a uh, 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 you know, a loan, FHA loan, like what I'm going to do. And uh, I actually, so so then, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm, I'm searching, I'm, I'm going on bigger pockets, I'm looking at podcasts and all this stuff. And I remember. Oh. We good, B. All right, cool, cool. All so, right. guys, I was experimenting. So, as you guys ever tune in to accelerate the grade, I'm always just trying new ways to add value. So, I call myself trying to tune in on clubhouse and do it it just didn't work so let's just go ahead and keep keep rocking all i right, ended cool. the clubhouse but that's why we want to celebrate the great you'll be able to hear it on all the pocket on all the different streaming sites facts i look I, hey, i'm glad you did it because i was on there trying to yeah it, it's boy. too much <laughs> muting it unmuting it it, it was a task yeah. facts facts so no so you know um so i remember i, I started driving lift right because time started getting a little hard but yep. during that summer man i invested over i maxed out all my credit cards fifteen thousand mm. dollars in personal development wow i knew i had to get my mind what's some right. of the things you invested in man, so i went through a life coaching program got it. i remember i i wanted i wanted a coach but i ended up stumbling into a, a program to become a life coach mm. so i'm like yo i need in on that yeah and that boy shifted my mindset in a whole nother way right all right then i went to another program um, called Landmark, right? Mm-hmm. This I hear about Landmark yeah, Forum. Land, yeah, man, Landmark Forum, yeah. right? So now I went through I went through both programs of that, right? So that's another almost thirty five hundred dollars. My my coaching program was twelve thousand dollars, and I didn't have it, but I knew I had to shift that mindset. What and made so, you do it though, bro? Because it's a hard, like, 
you know, trying to convince somebody to invest in themselves who never did it, it's a very hard. Did somebody say go do it? Like, or was enough was enough at that time? Because I'm always curious to what was that push to make you do it? Facts. Um, so for me, man, I, I started diving in 2016. That was that breaking point in my life where I knew things wasn't right, right? Paycheck to paycheck. Every two weeks, I was probably living off maybe $150 to my name. And I was making $60,000. Mm. And, you know, I, I, I had to re, I had to pretty much, man, you know, my friend, I love my friends, but I just wasn't happy, man. I was starting to get into like a bad place. And um, I remember my first book I read was called Six Month, uh, Six, uh, Six Figures in Six Months by Peter Volk. Mm-hmm. And he, that book just opened my mind up, bro. Like, okay. So then I got more curious, right? My, my dad had gave me some, uh, he get, he started giving me some old CDs um, from Earl Nightingale, right? I mean, Nightingale. And, and so I'm starting to tap in and everything was, you got to invest in your mindset. You got to invest in your mindset. And so when 2017 came, I was just like, yo, all right, I, I got to do this, man. Right, I, I know I got to do this. This is my year. I got some decent credit left on the line, and, and that's when I tapped in. And I loved every second of it, every part of being uncomfortable. I loved it, bro. Mm, that's good, and, I, and and I'm happy you said it because I tell people all the time, you're probably one program away, one piece of advice away, one action away from creating a total different life for yourself. So I always want people to really understand, like, yo, 2021, when I say it, I think people think, oh, 2021 is your year. I'm not trying to be cliche. Mm-hmm. We've generated more money in 2020 than we ever made in our life. Facts. I know that's for me. I believe the exact same thing Man. for you as well. Facts. I mean, live, yeah, million dollar year, bro. That's what I'm saying. So 2021 is only going to be that much better, right? Yeah. So I just want people to understand when we say it, we're not just trying to sound cool. No, we're saying it because it's possible for you to do it, but you got to make that decision. And when you make that decision, you make a decision not to look back. That's literally when everything changes for for most people. No, that's that's so true, man. So, so true. And, um, you know, just a, a little bit more on that story, man. I started driving Lyft because I had to pay bills. Yep. And, and I remember I remember my thing, my spiel was I had to get uncomfortable. Mm. So my people that would get in my car, I would ask them, like, have you ever worked with a life coach? Mm-hmm. You know, people were like, How you, what you talking about, bro? You know, and now, bro, I, I honestly, I would I would be able to coach I probably coached at least 25 people, bro, mm. on long rides. Mm. Just harnessing my skills on being able just to listen, right? Intentional listening. And that helped me out. Staying so outside of my comfort zone. I was giving my cards away. I didn't I didn't get not one client. I remember I was listening to a po- I was listening to podcast too while I was driving. Mm-hmm. And I, a I call it online university. I tell people this be all the time. <sighs> on your way to work, you need to be listening to something that's going to get you out of work. Mm. You don't just dis- radio is a privilege. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's like a, I don't want to say opportunity, but it's a joy. Like if you mm-hmm. get to turn up, you earned that yeah. turn up. So, but if you ain't doing what you love, if you going somewhere that you hate, you're going to have to start tapping into some podcasts. I love that, bro. I love that. Like you said, that privilege. Yeah. And uh, that one was a bigger pockets podcast. Nice. My, my customers was like, can you turn that off? They didn't want to hear it. It was on mm-hmm. mobile home invest. I sent that to the queen, bro. I came home. She was fired up. I never seen her so much fired up, right? Because she was still in her path to s- decide what she's gonna do. And what was she doing at that time? At that time, bro, she was she was doing apps just like me. All right, I was fired March third. She was fired. Um, she was fired. You said apps. She was driving Lyft too. No, she was driving Lyft, Amazon Flex, Wow, Go Puff, whatever it was, whatever bro, it took, whatever it took. So wow. she was like, "I'm not going back. Wow, I can make money from my phone. I'd rather just put the, put my hours in my own car." Yep. And we were still just trying to discover what we were going to do. We are going to NACA meetings, right? Mm-hmm. We wanted, we want to do real estate. Yeah. And that sparked it. Yeah. And it wasn't a lot of information out there. And, man, we just dove. We just dove right into it, man. We just start, you know, everybody is here at the gym, the Facebook marketplace. We got on there and started typing in mobile homes. But now you can type in manufactured homes because we ran the market up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, we started looking. And, man, I mean, we hit the road, bro. We in Chicago. We went down to Cincinnati. We drove down to uh, Indianapolis. We, we were just that hungry for homes, man. We dove right into it. Wow. So if somebody looking to go get a mobile home, kind of because if somebody's oblivious to what is a mobile home, like tell us what is it? Like if I never heard about mobile homes, like what is it? Like you got to be poor to live in a mobile Because my first impression, if you lived in a mobile home park, you know, I, I don't, I think, was it eight mile? Eight mile, yep. eight mile it seemed <laughs> like that place was jacked up, you know? So right. kind of educate us on, like, kind of what is a mobile home in the mobile home park? What is yeah. that? So 
for sure. So yeah, like like Neil talked about, right? You, you talked about the eight mile. That was my first introduction to what it was. A yep. trailer, right? You think of trailers, yep. you think of trailer trash, yep. right? Trailer park boys, all these negative stigmas around it. But really quick, like you know, mobile homes originally created for the wealthy. Mm, the, wow. Yeah. See? The DuPonts, I know that. the the you know, they basically when they was building the railroad system, they're like, yo, I don't like ain't no hotels around here. What can we do? So they had yacht masters design them this portable home. I mean Wow. So, you know, to fast forward, you know, it, mobile homes got that stigma like in the 70s. And so a mobile home, what the reason why it's called mobile home or technical term manufactured home because it's built inside of a factory and it's ship is able to ship to any location in the, in the country. Wow. So, um, you know, again, when you think about these homes, these are aluminum based homes. When you see they're, they're sitting up a little bit high um, and, and, you know, you hear the t single wide or a double wide. And they're in communities because of in the in the fifties when, when after uh, World War II when people were starting to come home they needed a place to to house the, the soldiers so they had all this leftover aluminum and what they would do they start building houses mm -hmm. so the government was one of the first big investors in the mobile home sector right. after the seventies when it went after suburb suburbia started getting built and then people started moving to the major cities it kind of start you start seeing them you know dwindle down because they're mostly in rural areas right. And you know that's that's what they are. They are affordable housing. Prices are still the same from the '70s, the '80s, and the '90s when it comes to mobile homes. Wow. So basically, even right now, what what's happening with the economy, where some people losing their jobs, some people, some people will, will have to go to mobile homes because that's the only thing that they may can afford for some. Yes, man. It's the only non-subsidized affordable house housing left in America. Meaning they don't get Section Eight. A few of them do, but not a lot. And so now here's a place. Here's a place where you can have your own home, right? Not apartment. Nobody upstairs, downstairs, anything like that from you. That you can make fifteen dollars an hour and still afford. Mm. And uh, you know, it's really a sector that, again, I tell people, I'm in this for the affordable housing crisis. Mm. That's you got to solve a problem. That's my problem to solve. Is that is that crisis? Wow, that's good. That's good. So, what are some ways that people generate income with mobile homes? Like, I don't. If I want to go buy one, do I flip these? Do I wholesale them? Do I? How do you make money in this industry for somebody like Yo B? How do I get bread? Like, well, how can I tap into this? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So the beautiful thing about it, that institutions like the banks don't see value in this. Mm. So as investors, we do see the value because right. we know people need a place to live. So the first thing I tell you, listen, wholesaling mobile homes is the best way to get in the mobile home industry, right? Wow. And you know when you don't really and know tell what people what wholesale. Oh, you was about to say I'm yeah, sorry for those who don't know. So wholesaling is you're you act you're operating as the middleman between the buyer and the seller, right? Mm -hmm. The buyers they want to sell their mobile home. Um, and, and I'm sorry, the seller wants to sell their mobile home, and they you know they're having a hard time finding people to buy it. So you as the actual uh, uh, the wholesaler, now what you're able to do is I tell people you want to build your buyers list. And yeah. what does building your buyers list look like? So I'm gonna give you guys a hack. Um, you guys can actually go in the Facebook marketplace on these large buy, sell, trade groups. Mm -hmm. People are looking for ap apartments. People, right? You find the places that sell apartments. Now you can able to make a post to say, "Hey, providing affordable housing, maybe in a different way, right? Give us some, g give us some spunk." Now you go to Google Forms. You create a form. And you want you want to get you want to start getting data, right? Mm. Listen, the biggest businesses in the world are data businesses. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Yeah, yeah. so you want to collect name, phone number, email. How much money do you make a month? What's your credit score looking like? Um, you you want to know what, how many bedrooms you need? How, how many bathrooms? You want to collect this data, so now you're building a buyer's list. So when you're approaching the seller, you're saying, "Hey, listen, I can help you sell your home." I have a list of people that are have. I see your home is a three bedroom, two bath. I have over you know a hundred people that are looking for this house that I can send this out to, and I can help you sell your home. Now on the front end, I'm not looking for nothing from you, mm -hmm. right? This is completely free to you. I make my money once we get the buyer. Now once I send out to those buyers, I created um, the demand, right? Do an open house. Now they can go to see the house. The seller knows what's going on, right? How much he's going to get for the house. Now you're able to once you find that that person that you know that's ready to to, to buy, they get approved by the mobile home community. And what does that mean is the mobile home park has what is called lot rent, right? It's just mm. like a HOA fee. Got it. Huge parking lot. You're just paying to park your home there mm. every you know every month. So they have to get on agreements with the actual mobile home park. So now 
once you know again once they're approved now for my buyer right my buyer is ready to rock and roll now i act as the middle person right i do a bill of sale with my actual seller saying the agreed price i do a bill of sale with the actual buyer right and the, and the seller gives me the title because mobile homes in most states are just like cars mm. they're titled mm. and pretty much smooth transaction now right my buyer has a new home. My seller just sold his house, and I walk away with the difference or whatever I priced it. So, I'll give you an example: if I price, if the seller is selling his home at ten thousand dollars, I put it on the market for fifteen thousand dollars. I walk away with a five thousand dollar profit. Mm. And can I do this not living in that city? Like, just say I'm from I'm from Philly, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to wholesale one in Atlanta. Can Can you do that? Yeah, you can. And that's when you really re- building a relationship with a seller. Right, you really want to build the relationship with the seller. You want to build the trust with the seller. I know at times when we were teaching, I would tell people like, "Hey, you want to kind of be there because the industry was so new to it." Mm. But now, if you build the, the the relationship with the seller and you build the trust, they will do that transaction for you and then send you send you the difference because they understand mm. how much they you know. Again, you have the buying power because I I'm bringing you the buyer. Right now, if you're dealing with somebody who's shady and they you know and, and they're like, "Well, why are you getting this?" That may not be a person you want to do business with, right? But if somebody, again, you want to find out what's their pain points, why do they want to sell this house, what's going on in their life, and when you understand that, now you're able to help them out as well. Mm, key. And, guys, listen, he just broke down away, And it don't sound like you need money to do that. Mm-hmm. No, nah, like, for real. Like, unless you want to take out, like, a, a classified ad or something like that. Like, Facebook is a tool, bro. It's free. Wow, bro. It's so – I'm just amazed that we were, we were in a car talking last night. Um, and it's so funny that it's nothing new under the sun. Mobile homes has been out forever. I want to ask you this. Mobile homes has been out forever. Event space has been out forever. Trucking been out forever. Why do you think we starting to grasp this idea now, wealth and equity? Why do you think now, like all these years, why in the last few years we starting to get it? What do you think? Yeah. Um, honestly, I think that the way we were teached, right, most of us come went to public school. And uh, ownership was really not, it wasn't, I know for me, it wasn't taught at all. Same. You know, it was how to be a great worker, right? Everything would be, you know, well, when you go get in the real world, you can't act like this. Your behavior has to be this. You ha- and so that kind of groomed us to be this, this amazing worker, right? Retirement. And so those options, it, it didn't even give us a thing. I remember going, when I first got into the corporate world, it was kind of like, I remember saying, like, I want to own this company. But I know I had to climb up the corporate ladder, so I was willing to bust my butt just to climb up this corporate ladder, right? Versus starting my own and, and you know and creating my own hierarchy and uh, fear. You know, a lot of that is around based around fear is mindset, right? It's it's that um, we don't think it's possible, and you know when you start really diving into possibility, uh, man, you know it's it's. Po- I can I can start for days when we talk about what's possible, but you know we actually don't understand what's possible because we have all these fears this these these stories that we tell ourselves that we that that is not capable right money is the root of all evil uh, we start thinking that you know only rich people do this and that i mean we create all of these stories and we don't even assign ourselves to rich to being wealthy unless it's hitting the lottery mm. so Ooh. you know it, it and that and, and you know again if i program my mother thinks that way if my father thinks my uncle my brother generational it, programming right wow and we go against the grain. We're crazy. And nobody wants to be the crazy person in their family. What do they think about you when you, you, you and your lady talking about y'all about to invest in mobile homes? Y'all, y'all, what did people think? Man, the funny thing, my mom was just like, oh, there go another venture for buyer. Because I try so much stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, I yeah. try so many things. And you know, she was like, do that make money? That's the first thing. They Do they make money? And they'll tell me, okay, well, I'll wait till you do it. And then I'll, I'll, I'll see if it works. And, uh, you know, again, I, they thought we was crazy, man. You know, it was kind of like a lot, a lot of people even thought fear for our lives. Like, are y'all sure y'all want to go to these communities and all right. the stigmas? And we just like, yo, we ain't scared. We just shy. Like, what's up? Yeah, crazy. Share with me one of the deals that was like a good one. Like, like I don't know if you bought something for a few grand, you flipped it. Share yeah. share Because I know once somebody finished listening to this episode, they're going to take action. They're going to go out there and do something similar. Because they didn't even know it exists. So if you right. if you got any one deal, I know you did so many, but oh, it, man. share with them one thing. So I got one joint. I had to pull out my I got to pull out my cackle so I can get exact on yeah, that yeah, on, yeah, on yeah, this yeah, boy, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? So what I did was, man, we uh we had a deal. It was an older lady selling a house, um, and she mobile was selling, home. Yep, oh, selling a mobile home for yeah. three grand. Got it. I didn't even try to negotiate with her. House looked great, tip top. Her husband had just passed. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll get it from her. 
um, put the mobile home. I was like, you know, I'm gonna do this on payments, right? So anybody watching, for us, we do we do uh, rent to own. And the reason why we do rent to own because we realize we say, listen, man, for one, most of the homes are further out, and we want to provide home ownership. Yep. So what we were able to do was say, all right, what we're gonna do? We put this house on the market. All right, the average rent in that area was eight hundred dollars, mm-hmm. right? So for us, we like, we want to be in line with the market. Now the lot rent at that park was eight. I'm sorry, three seventy two, okay. three hundred seventy two dollars. So we was like, all right, we're gonna cash flow four hundred and twenty eight dollars because that makes up the eight hundred dollars. We're gonna put it on the terms for sixty months, just mm-hmm. like a car, five yeah. years, right? And we're gonna ask for a fifteen hundred dollar down payment. Mm. So at the end of that term, end of the five years, that four twenty eight a month, right, equals twenty five thousand six hundred and eighty dollars plus the fifteen hundred that we had up front. That's twenty seven thousand one hundred and eighty dollars that we generated from a three thousand dollar home, bro. Over seven hundred percent ROI. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Three thousand dollar home. So you, you fifteen hundred up front. So I got half of what the home cost me right back. Facts. And then they pay four hundred and something per month for the sixty months. Four twenty eight. Yep. So they paying. So they in line with the market, right? They yeah. paying eight hundred dollars, right? Just like a rental. But again, it's they're gonna they own it at the end. Yeah. And I tell people, I say, even though that house is twenty seven thousand dollars, where else you gonna find a move in ready house for twenty seven grand? Wow. Wow. Ooh. And, and let me ask: you, Is it possible for somebody to do a deal like that once a quarter? Oh yeah, yes. I, the f- the beautiful thing about we man, we got students, bro. That uh, man, shout out, shout out our girl Nicole, man, who generated over one hundred ninety three thousand dollars in the pandemic, bro. Wow. Six months went Bushy crazy. flipping mobile homes? Flipping, wholesaling, moving mobile homes. Just I've been going crazy. Wow. Bro. Woo. <laughs> pandemic put people on their feet. Facts. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> man, I, I really like that concept. So you could wholesale a home. You can flip a home. That's the same as wholesale. What's some other ways you can make money in this game? Man, so you somebody c- listening. I love it. So you could be a bird dog, man. What mm, I mean by tell bird me about dog. That. So let's say it's a mobile home dealer or it's a mobile home park owner that's like, hey, you know what? I need homes. I need some homes. And they, they're, they're so you can actually approach them and say, listen, I can find you homes. Now they may pay you a percentage for every home that you find them that either they're going to move or they're going to buy right out, right? So n- like most terms, I see people paying about a thousand dollars. Thousand bucks for you. All you gotta do is find a home, right? Take pictures of it, send it to them. They okay it. Now they're gonna probably send you the check, mm. and all you gotta or the t- uh, and all you gotta do is go collect the title from the actual owner, man. So I mean, it's money that way. Uh, we talked about the you know flipping a mobile home, just finding it for a low price, putting it back on the market for a higher. You say then moving it too? You can move them. Move mobile yeah, homes. Tell me bro. about that, yeah. man. So the beautiful thing about it is mobile homes. Well, the reason I call mobile homes are manufactured homes because again. They're able, depending on the years, right? A lot of times, if it's something that's been sitting for 30 years, yeah. you can put that boy in transit, but it can, something can go wrong with it. But under those houses, what you may see is called skirting, which kind of surrounds it. Yep. They have axles that tires can connect to. Mm. And then in the, in the front, um, they actually have a, um, an, a, a hitch, which would go to the actual 18-wheeler, uh, and now you can actually take that boy and move it, right? So there's a lot of people that have homes on private land that are like they either want a new mobile home or they want to build a house on, right? So now they're saying like, hey, you know what? I, I want to move this house. So they let the house go a thousand dollars. You come get this house for free if you want to. Mm. Just come and move it off mm. my land. So we get a lot of new investors. They want to buy this house, but unfortunately they don't have a place to move it. Right. So I tell people, you want to shop that house to a mobile home dealer who is an authorized dealer, right? Or a mobile home park, right? You're like, hey, you guys need homes? I got a home. So now you can shop that, and then you make money from there. And then one another way uh, I love again we're gonna probably drop this probably in within 2021 man is teaching people how to uh, actually get m- uh, mobile homes on private land mm. right so now mobile homes so if I for example we get these people all the time that say hey listen I got I got all this land man I want to put a mobile home on it so the first thing you gotta find out what's the state laws right what's your state legislation what it, what it, you know and then also zoning. Are you zoned to have a mobile home on it, right? You don't want type of a, a restrictive covenant basically saying that on my deed, I can't I can't move this home. I mean, I'm sorry, I can't put a mobile home on here, right? Now, if if your home is, is, is fine, right? If the state laws is in line, the zoning is in line, right? You go to the municipality, find out about the zoning. Um, and last but not least, if you have to hook up either your your uh, if you have city water, city sewer access to it, that's amazing. But if you gotta put septic or you gotta put a well system, that can range anywhere, both of them anywhere from like fourteen grand all the way up to possibly forty five thousand per, per home or per home. 
Wow. Right? So that's serious. But you got to know what you're doing. Got to know what you're doing. But yeah. the beautiful part about it is if I get a home, let's say I, get a, I have two acres. I, put a, I buy a mobile home, let's say $40,000, right? My, with my installation and everything, I'm in a whole nother fifty thousand. I'm in ninety thousand. If mobile homes, if mobile homes, or even single family houses in this area are selling for say two hundred k, I can comp my mobile home with those regular houses. So mm. now I can come lower, right? So let's say I did all that for ninety, and I see this house selling for two fifty. I can go put my house in the market for one seventy five. Crazy. Now, <laughs> right now. <laughs> now I can go make me, you know what I'm saying, 85k off that. Wow. Woo. And this, I feel like this something no one ever talks about this industry, bro. It's like Facts. a sleeper. Facts. It's <laughs> like when I start teaching people about event space, I'm like, yo, they've been around forever. But mm -hmm. when you go online and you say event space, there's only a couple people really teaching it. When you go online and say mobile homes, I only know you and your 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 lady yeah, teaching. That's the same this. thing with event spaces. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so and that and that's just giving you guys another gem. Like, what is it? And you always talk about uh monetize your genius. Yeah, like, monetize. What your can genius. you do right now? Somebody's listening to this, and you might be really good at something. You need to start sharing that with somebody because that might change somebody's life. Be and his lady has changed thousands of people's a lot, thousands of lives with this unique information that been actually around probably for a hundred plus years. I'm sure, right? But again, it also it also talks about if you apply the information, you have to apply it. So one of the things that me and B did, I'm going to be investing with him on buying some mobile home parks. So I know, I don't know if people start at mobile home parks. I don't know if they work their way up, but kind of talk to us about some of the benefits of owning a mobile home park for somebody who be like, yo, bro, I'm ready to just go straight and grab me a park. Facts, yeah, man. Yeah. Now, for sure. So the good thing, most mobile home parks, you're buying already a cash flowing asset, mm. right? The, the money is in the land. Uh, and what I love about a mobile home park is you're able to buy more units for a cheaper price. Right. Right? You from Philly, so you already know like a three unit in Philly is gonna probably yeah. run y'all up to like five hundred K and plus. Yep. You, right? Yeah. So now that's only three units. Mm -hmm. If I tell you, hey, in Pennsylvania, right side out of right outside of Philly, I got land with three mobile homes on it, that, that boy may only cost you about Because you actually own a mobile home park in PA somewhere. Yes, yeah. yes, right outside of Pittsburgh, Greensburg, right? Yep. And now, right, now we're able to able to buy way more units for a cheaper cost, um, provide affordable housing. We know what rents are doing. They're continuing to rise. Now we have a product where people can come and say, hey, you know what? I got to either have a fresh start. I can't afford to, you know, what the, what the cities are doing. The rents are steady going up. And now most lot rents, right, when lot rent is pretty much just like an HOA fee, right? You're, again, we're talking like a parking lot. You're paying for each pad. Each pad has its own, you know, um, space. You're paying for that space plus the amenities in that community. So now lot rents are way lower, right? We learned 275. That's the average lot rent in America, right? Mm -hmm. Between 275 to 375. So the value is what I love about what we're able to do is as a park owner, if you buy a mobile home park, let's say it has 50 units, but you have a you have vacant, you have 20 units that are vacant. So you're cash flowing on 30 units. Mm -hmm. If I come in and I fill up those those additional 20, now I added even more value to my park, right? Mm. Looks way more desirable to another investor. Say, oh, man, he got this boy up to almost, you know, 98, 100% vacancy. So I added value there. And then there's so many ways. Like, I love it because, you again, you know, you're talking about in the black wealth community, we have people that vendor machines, right? You can add that that aspect for yep. You add value to the house. You can come in and raise lot rents because yeah. if they're lower, and they're not to say you're trying to price gouge, but now you're just trying to get more in line with yep. the market and yep. still give people, you know, uh, um, catch up to the cost of living. And it's so funny. We were talking about it, and this is something, uh, just a gem, like anybody listening to this, you want to do this with pretty much everything. So uh, as we were driving, me and B was tapping into some different information, and they were just talking about how every year on your properties, whether it's your investment properties, whether it's your mobile home, whether it's your event spaces, you need to stick with the cost of inflation. So if you're adding $20 additional to rent every year, think about that. That's additional $20, $20. But if you got 100 units, right, let's just do the math. You got 100 units at $20. I'm not a mathematician, y'all, so I got to <laughs> pull out the calculator. So it's $20 at 100 units. That's two grand. 
times 12, right? Mm -hmm. That's $24,000 a year extra. Mm -hmm. And just say, what if you haven't raised your rent in the last four years? You just slept on times four, $96,000 that you could have had. So if anyone's listening to this, if you've been renting out your properties, whether mobile homes, whether event spaces, start increase your prices gradually every year. And they expect $20. They can expect it's not neg negligible. It's, it's not crazy. Right. But if you do that every year, they're going to want to expect it, and you're going to be able to increase your income without doing any extra work. You're essentially increasing your NOI, facts. which is huge. Yeah, facts. And you're able to add value, right? Yep. You, now you, you're putting more money in the bank for any park upgrades, right? We yep. talked about it. The one thing most park owners or in the institutional park owners are doing, um, they're, they're basically raising value by adding those gazebos, adding those parks, adding, you know, adding basketball courts because you do want to make it a community. Somebody had the roof. We looked at multiple. They just had the roof over the mailbox, Facts. which yep. a park didn't have. Park, yeah. right? It's raining. Yeah. I pull up. I want I want to, I want to get wet. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yep. So, yeah, man. Yeah, that's key, bro. I, I'm just happy that you breaking this thing down. What's some – um. We always talk about the success in entrepreneurship. Can you share with any – what's something you should look out for when maybe – in? I want to do two things. What's something you should look out for maybe if when you start investing in mobile homes or parks? And what's something that – a failure that you don't wish on nobody that might have happened to you in general? It don't got to be mobile homes, but if in, during your entrepreneurship career, has anything happened where you was like – Man, I don't wish that on nobody yeah. if you got anything like that. <laughs> so I'll start off with the, you know, as far as things to look at mobile homes, right? The roof, in, when you come in there, if you come in the house and you see the, the entire ceiling has mold on it and things, mm -hmm. those are some some red flags for you. You're seeing holes, visible holes come in. Roof can, roofing can cost you a lot of money if you come in there with low capital, right? right. Um, a new roof can cost you upwards, man, six to eight grand depending mm -hmm. on a single wide. Um, plumbing, plumbing is another expensive expense. Again, if you're coming in with low capital, that can come run you anywhere from two to three grand. If all the pipes got to be, you know, renewed. Um, and then, uh, you know, definitely underneath uh, mobile home electrical, you can get electrician to come in and hook it up. But, you know, if, if it's, it's pretty bad, that may run you another 1500 or so. Uh, everything else is cosmetic. You know, that's what I love about it. Mobile home, a mobile home rehab or full rehab on a, on a single wire, 14 grand. And wow. people be like, yo, for what? You know, because you know, you, I mean, again, you know, real estate, that's yeah. going to cost you almost a lot. 70 plus yeah, yeah. For per floor, Absolutely. depending on what you're doing. Yep. Um, double wide, 24, tw you know, upwards to $24,000. When you say double wide, break down, what's the difference between the single? Is that like having a duplex? Like, in yeah. So then double wide is basically, uh, so single wide is what you see an individual mobile home. They're probably square footage anywhere from, uh, if I say about like 700, 780 square feet upwards to about 980 square feet. A double wide is basically what it is, is two single wides. They're 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 create and they're made they're put together, mm. right? So it makes this this home now that has over a twelve hundred square feet, right? Larger house, larger bedrooms, normally three to four bedrooms, um, and most people it's more desirable, right? Because it looks more like a, a smaller single family home. Got it. Um, and you know I think those are some of the key things to look for when you when you're talking about repairs. Um, you know, older houses that need to be moved as well. Um, you know, you just want to look at the condition. It can be done, but you want to have somebody come assess it. Mobile home movers are the, like some of the best people to really build a relationship with because they know what's going on. They know who, what parks need what. They this is what they do. Yeah. So it, it's great. And I and to share my experience of failure. One thing I love. Uh, shout out my homegirl Lucretia Davis. We both started entrepreneurship at the same time. And one thing, I, I, if I can do all over again, was have a plan. Mm. Have a That's plan, good. right? She That's hired good. a coach. And I watched her hire a coach and literally gave it a blueprint, followed that six figures, six months. Wow. Here I am trying to do it my way, mm. right? Just doing it everything my way. And I wouldn't, I didn't make a dime mm. in six months, right? Wow. It wasn't until I got with my queen and was able to realize, like, okay, we got to do this with a plan. Right? Let's have a plan. Let's start because I understood what my friend was able to do. Yeah. And then once I once I discovered that we had our plan, man, bro, it was it it was dope, right? Every yeah. we went from two houses a month to three houses a month mm -hmm. to four houses a month. And then we finally decided, like, yeah, we got to teach this. Yeah. Because people, everybody would be so curious, and I was explaining to so all my friends, this is what I do, and I'm just like, 
yo, I, I, I gotta, I gotta put this in. I gotta package this, Pack, man. It's yeah. so, monetize I mean, your genius. Yeah. Monetize my genius, yeah. man. And um, you know, that happened. One of my friends, shout out my boy Phil. He was like, "Yo, I see what you're doing. How can I? How can I, man? What can I do?" And now he killing it, bro. He he didn't retire, moved to Mississippi. You wow. know what I'm saying? He killing the mobile home park game. And what he, what I did was, I created a blueprint for him. And once I created that, I was just like, "Hold on, that's it." Put that in course form, you know. Put that in ebook form, and then after that, we went webinar crazy, bro. Wow, and you start just teaching people all around the yeah, world. Yeah, bro. And I think it's so important, like. If you're listening to this as an entrepreneur, pay for the fast track. I tell people all the time, your biggest expense in life is what you do not know. Imagine if, it, if just say B said his company generated millions this year, right? What if he only had half of the year to do that? That means if just say if he made a million, right, he only made half of that. Why? Because he tried to spend six months trying to figure it out all on his own, right? So my biggest thing, if I could go back in time, it would be invest in mentorship, invest in coaching. I just spent, I told you, 55000 on a mastermind because I'm like, I'm trying to get there that much quicker. I think I got a lot in me where I'm cool, yeah. but I want the fast track, bro. Yeah. I'm getting tired of, I don't think you need to go to school through 12, 12 years to figure things nah, out. Like, nah. I want to find and follow somebody who's been able to go through the path and get there quicker. And one is funny, I, I figure we'll talk about it now. I was able to convince B, I'm like, B, on my podcast, if you guys listen, we never sell anything or, or do anything like that. But I said, man, I want you – I'm about to invest with you. I'm about to buy a few mobile home parks. And some people here want to buy mobile home parks. They want to buy – they want to flip. They want to learn a game. And B came and already did a session with one of my uh, – some of my mentees, and it was crazy. So what I convinced him to do, guys, is to offer a discount. Um, and, and the website is greatnessmobilehomeinvesting.com. And I'm like, bro – I want you to do something you never done for my students. So he's releasing the program. And uh, if everybody's listening, you're going to be able to get access to that here at that site. And B, just tell a little bit about the program and, and what you teach. Because I know somebody here is going to be like, yo, I need to take action on this. So talk about that program real Thanks, quick. Man. Then we'll jump back into it real quick. For sure. So, you know, our program really is the A to Z on mobile home investment, right? We What we did was we did a few. We, we got all the questions that people ask, like all the hows. And so my program covers, you know, covers the basics, the one-on-one. -on -one. We cover how to find these mobile homes, where these mobile home deals are, how to market your mobile home, how to actually close your deals. How to how, what the paper the correct paperwork right? We give you the sample contracts for your actual state. Mm, um, that's we, key. Of course, we talk mindset. Yeah, you gotta put some mindset in there, right? Because if your mind not right, you're not gonna get your money right. And uh, you know, we and then we show you how to basically duplicate the process. And and a plenty of gems in there, man. And and honestly, bro, we 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 were the prices for the people. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. people tell us all the time, like, man, y'all should be charging like three grand for this yeah, thing. Yeah, we're yeah. like, no, nah, no, nah, yeah. we, we got something just that's, that's that's like we want the people to be like, yo, everybody that does it is like. Man, I can't believe I paid this much for it, yeah. and my return on investment is this crazy. It's cra Just think about you being able to invest a little bit of money that you're charging here and being able to go do that deal for three grand and is making mm. 27 grand over paying you every single – that's 700% return? Yeah, crazy. That's crazy. So, guys, if you're listening, make sure you guys shoot me a DM or shoot me a DM and be like, yo, I was on a podcast. I need that link. Uh, we'll offer you that special link or go to greatness mobilehomeinvesting.com so you're able to get access to it. But, B, let me, uh, let's me dive in a little bit more and we'll wrap it up. What's what's a couple of your favorite books? Any books that really help you get your mind right or any any books stand out for you? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, The Go-Giver. Mm. Uh, uh, it's Bob. I forgot his last name. Yo, Google it. It'll come up. Yeah, The Go-Giver. Go he actually has a series, right? But The Go-Giver really shift my mindset on uh, the, the the gift of giving. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, I've always considered myself a giver, but I didn't really understand the value of why I give so much. Wow. And it's not about the receiving impact, but it's greater to give, right, than to me it is to receive, right? Because I'm ambitious anyway, so I'm going after what I get. So that book really helped shift my mind. Of course, uh, Grant Cardone's The 10X Rule. Yeah. That was something that really kind of put make me put my foot on my on the gas. Um, let's see. Uh, I think... Uh, also, can you uh, imagine ten xing your income now uh, for this year? Like, bruh. what would you do? Any any plans if that happens? Because it's going to happen. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm dumping it all in assets, man. Yeah, same. And, and that's my. This is the year. I mean, honestly, just going forward is just you know the assets. I mean, we're seeing what's going on possibly with currency. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people. We just saw what happened with Bitcoin, right? Yeah. Up Forty grand. Yeah, we don't crazy. even know 
whoever is listening to this, what it's going to be when, you know, once right. they're listening to it. And so understanding that, and, you know, for me, I'd rather have that in assets than just my money sitting in somebody's bank savings account not making point zero 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 point one percent on it. Crazy, bro. <laughs> And, and it's so funny. I'm like, yo, if you're listening to this, 2021, we're here. Make this an asset driven year for you. I ain't gonna tell you you can't play around. Like, uh, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, go ahead. I'm gonna tell you, go ahead and do your thing. Like, you need to have a little bit of fun, mm-hmm. but you need to make sure this year is about you increasing your income and, and you investing in yourself and things that can uh invest in yourself and things that can just make you better. Like, I'm telling you, y'all, the clothes can wait. The shoes can wait. Mm-hmm. The cars can wait. All of those things can wait. But what can't wait is you investing in yourself. What can't wait is you making yourself better. Because understand this, man. Every year going to keep going by. We got. I tell people this, B. Poverty ends with me. Wealth begins with me. Mm. I'm making it my responsibility. I'm putting my family on my back. And anybody listening to me, listening here, I expect you to do the same. Right. You know now you can change your family situation. You know about mobile home investing. You know about trucking. You know about turning your credit into cash. You know all of these things. But the thing is, you got to take action on the information. It only going to work if you do. If you're looking to change your situation, today is the day. Stop waiting, hoping, and wishing somebody's going to save you. You got to be willing to save yourself. And that's how B changed his life. That's how I changed my life. We made a decision. So I'm telling you guys, make a decision, and I, I can assure you some things are going to happen. Any closing words you'd like to give the people, my brother? I appreciate you coming on here sharing so much value on this podcast on mobile home investing. For sure, man. Well, the first and foremost, man, listen, if you do not believe in yourself, mm. that is one of the key things, right? You got to believe. You got to be willing to trust yourself. And that was one of the key things for myself. I, it took me a while to think that, to, to know I trust myself. And that came with a lot of, yes, I was scared, but you got to be willing to step outside your comfort zone. See, comf- see, possibility is on the other side of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone is everything we do comfortable. We go right to TV, right? We go on the social media. We do these things that's comfortable. We hang with friends. We get drunk. We do all these things that are comfortable that we know we can do over and over again. But when you're willing to do something, know that you don't know of, it's uncomfortable. You got to be willing to get uncomfortable. You have to be willing to stretch yourself to a, a, a possibility because here's the reality. You won't die. You don't die doing it. Mm. So you got once you change that mindset to nothing – being getting wealthy is not going to kill me, right? We're not talking about no street stuff. Everything neo, everything that you listening, we're not talking about nothing illegal that's going to put you in jail or death. We're talking about things that's going to change your life. Mm. So when you change your mindset to listen, I have to step outside my comfort zone. I got to take this money, like Neil said, not buying the fancy cars, not buying the thing to invest in myself to do something better, and actually putting people in positions to do something better, that's when y'all grow in groups. And Strength in Numbers, man, we're doing that all 2021. You see me and Neo is actually going to collaborate. We're not talking about competition. It's collaboration. This is what we're doing. You got to get on that train. We don't want you left behind. Let's get it. Let's get it, y'all. And listen, I'm going to let B, he close it out with that. I appreciate everybody tapped in, y'all. Let people know, how do they follow follow you on Instagram, follow your wife, follow mobile home investing? I don't want to chop any of that up. Let people know that, and we're going to close it down. Yes, for sure. So make sure you can follow my personal page, at Byron S. Sellers. Uh, follow the business page, at Mobile Home Elite Investors. And if you want to follow the queen, Char- at Sharnies T. Williams. Uh, all on Instagram. Make sure you follow us. Um, the queen, man, listen. She, she mostly posts us, but then she's going to tell you to follow that business page. So make sure you follow that business page at Mobile Home Elite Investors. Let's get it, y'all. And remember, man, he don't sound crazy. It don't even make sense. Go to greatnessmobilehomeinvesting.com. Tap in. I, ha- I had to twist his arm a little bit to do it, but, man, don't miss out on that opportunity. But anyway, y'all, thank you so much for tapping into another episode of Accelerate the Great. Go use this information to change your situation. Let's get it.